Spartan Ops is finally starting to show some of its potential as this sort of mini second campaign. You can avoid spawns, there are multiple paths you can take, multiple strategies you can do. Much more exciting. As always, this is no deaths, and I'll show you how to do it. Hi guys, I'm RC and this is episode 7 Invasion of Spartan Ops. This is the first chapter back up on the map Apex. I'm on Legendary, I'm on my own, and I do not die once during this. I'm going with a very vehicle focused loadout this time for the Mantis section and the Ghost Rush that I'm going to be doing towards the middle and end of this, but it will help uh, a little bit towards the start as well. Obviously I've got a DMR, Plasm Pistol, that's pretty much standard for Spartan Ups, and Regen so I can get my shields back quicker than the standard recharge. Now these portals are, of which there are two as far as I know on this map, they are optional in the strictest sense, you can just run past them, they don't matter for any sort of completion, they don't block you from progressing. But I found that when I did take them out, I did just take that little bit of extra time to disable them, that I had an easier time with the enemies, it seemed like there were less enemies spawning all over the place. Now you don't have to destroy these barriers, which there is a little bit of a delay before you can shoot through them. The visual disappears before the actual physical part of it. The Covenant, uh, it's a new mechanic as far as I know, they will actually disable these barriers on their own. Now I'm going up here, there are no enemies here, but I did find that if I didn't go up here and just have a little look around, that enemies would spawn and start coming down the hill at me. Don't know whether that's connected to disabling the portal or not, but it just seemed to be being aggressive, just going up there and not allowing anything to spawn was the best way to guarantee my safety. Now this bit is probably the hardest bit, there's quite a lot of enemies packed into this very narrow area. Two ghosts, a couple of turrets, several jackals, a couple of elites. I'm going to try and overcharge this elite on the turret. can get a nice sort of range shot on him. If you ever played Halo 3 Lazo, you'll remember range shooting brutes. That was a pretty fun tactic. In that game they couldn't see you from a certain distance so they would just sort of stand there and, and take the overcharged plasma shots coming at them. Now interestingly plasma turrets are actually really effective against ghosts. Let me just show you. We also have the gunner perk on as I said this is very vehicle focused loadout this time. So this allows me to strafe back and forth very quickly. There we go, wow. Already dead. The other ghost, I'm going to EMP and I'm going to board him, take him out. I just want to take out the rest of this infantry immediately around him before I do that though. Some jackals over here as well. Now I'm getting pretty low on my DMR and my plasma pistol. Plasma pistol's no problem, obviously there's a bunch on the ground from all these enemies I've been killing anyway. There's actually a crate with plenty of carbines on as well. Obviously I usually have the ammo perk for Spartan up, so I can usually carry around a much more ammo than this. But it's no problem here. Here's the carbine. And let's pick up another plasma pistol, why not? And just use these rocks to approach. There we go. Now this is where you get the choice. You can either go to the left or the right. If you go down the left path, you end up running straight into a wraith. And I thought, mm, I don't really want to do that. There's also plenty of enemies and another ghost around there. So I'm going to go around the right path, which is more infantry focused. There are a couple of ghosts, but I'll be able to sort of rush past them, as you saw at that little preview at the start of this video. And again, you don't have to destroy the battery for it, but it just saves a bit of time. So coming over here, that path up to my left goes directly to where the Wraith would spawn, but you can actually avoid a spawn, which is amazing for a Spartan Ops mission. Quite frankly, it's pretty standard for a campaign mission, and having choice and stuff. Here's the second portal. I was really impressed with this chapter. This whole episode was much more fun than most of the first half of the season, really. Now here you can actually skip over this little bit of rockery here. Don't have to disable that or 
deal with that shield at all, really. And I decided, oh, while I'm up here, I'll clear out some of the enemies, and then that'll make my time easier when I'm trying to get into the Mantis. Mm, no dice, unfortunately. As you can see, more just spawn in in portals. So, yeah, forget that. And there we go, more portals. Yucks. Forget it. When you actually get down onto the ground here, this is when Murphy, your marine buddy that you picked up in the last episode, come in on a phantom and it'll drop you a mantis. There's a lot of enemies around here. This is pretty hairy. I have been destroyed almost as soon as getting into it before. But basically the other option is to just work the way down that path. And I just thought this is a bit more exciting. Seems a bit more awesome. <laughs> really I just wanted to show the fact that you could skip over that rock. And not have to go through the shield door. I thought that was... That's much more like the Spartan Ops like I want personally. Than what we've been getting previously. Now Murphy and the Phantom he can't actually die. That really annoyed me at one of my attempts at this mission. So I've covered just in the very back here. Just behind some rocks. And I'm going to take out this enemy phantom for him first, before I deal with all the guys on the ground. He's not a particularly intelligent flyer, and one time he was just sort of hovered above a bunch of furor gun grunts, which absolutely tore him to pieces. And then he bugs out and he says, oh, Crimson, you're on your own, and you fail the chapter. And I was not very happy about that. So from here on out, I'm upgraded with my wheelman and my gunner. The gunner gives me much more firing time in between cooldowns on my machine gun. And the wheelman perk allows me to recover quicker from EMPs, so that's good against grunts and jackals basically. And it also means that my health for the mantis recovers more quickly as well, once my shield goes down and I start taking some damage. So right here, there'll be some enemies spawning down this path that I can see right now and further up the hill from where I've just come. And also some Prometheans will be teleporting in as well. This is pretty easy. You just come to the back here and just lay waste to everything. Pretty much a god of war by this point. The hardest bit was the first part of this mission. So funnily enough, even though you're supposed to clear this particular area, if you go to the left, you keep going around the cliff and go to the left side of this sort of foreign monument next to me. There is actually a similarly sized area that is completely clear. No enemies will ever go there. Don't know why we couldn't get a pick up there, but, uh, you know. So yeah, sometimes these knights will also rush you. Obviously, you've got the stomp, which is on... RB for the Mantis as well, and that should be a one-hit kill on most knights, even on Legendary. If you get it right, of course. Now in four-player co-op, since there's so many of you, you could just go where you had the choice between the left and the right path. You could just go two players down one path, two players down the other path, and you can actually go hijack the Wraith if you want. That will give you some extra firepower here. Even having a vehicle to clear out this section isn't necessary. If you basically just respawn with DMRs and plasma pistols, you'll have everything you need to deal with this section. But it'll just go by a little bit more quickly, a little bit more easily, if you have some vehicles by the time you're here. So two people can go on the Wraith if they want. That was pretty fun. One person should go on the gun and have the gunner perk if they can. And they should use that to help de-shield things and also kill the watchers, which is kind of hard for the Wraith driver to actually hit them with the mortar. Here we go. Last five enemies. That wasn't so bad, was it? I really had quite a lot of fun doing this. There was a little bit of frustration in there at the middle when uh, 
it seemed like there was starting to be infinite enemies and I couldn't figure it out. But doing the way I've shown you here, that seems to be reasonably consistent. If you don't like rushing over the mountain to try and get the mantis, then just go down that narrow passageway slowly, take everything out. And game over. Now you'll spend the rest of this episode dealing with invaders on board the Infinity. It gets a little bit repetitive, but it's still fairly fun. Let's just see what my time was. 9 minutes 56 seconds. So on the left and right you'll have the previous and the next Spartan Up chapter respectively when they go live. I'm doing these sort of out of order actually. But if they're not live yet, there should be an annotation link in the middle. And that'll take you to the playlist and you'll be able to see what is available already. So I'll see you guys next time.